Hey, it's Ryan here, and I'm here for uh, Tortoise Dagger, Thor's Day, or Thor's Day, Thursday, and we have a special today I think you all are going to enjoy very, very much. It's sponsored by VKNG Jewelry, and uh, they originally sent me this ring, the Odin ring, which is a silver ring, and it says Halo on no, it. It's a very beautiful ring. I thought it would make an excellent shield, and that's exactly what I did. I made a shield. Uh, Linden Skjoldir, or a Lindenwood Shield, or Lind, like in the old sagas in the uh, rune poems. And I covered it in real rawhide, homemade cheese glue, like they would have made back in the day, and riveted it with actual forge nails and everything. Made the center boss. You can go by and check that video out. I really mu very much appreciated VKNG sponsoring a historical video and me endorsing their ring by using it as an actual emblem for the shield because I think it made an excellent shield depiction. Something great on a Viking Age shield. I also tested it, so you can go by and check that video out as well where I used Viking Age arms and armor and tested the shield. It survived well, and as you can see here, I even repaired it. So it shows how durable the shields were of the time period. But today, they wanted me to do a Thor's Day, or Tortoise Dagger special, uh, in honor of Thor. So they sent me a Mjolnir pendant. I'm not sure exactly which one. I know they have several different ones. But I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for the first time and let you see it. It's got a beautiful little elegant bo box that's in gold and black that says VKNG Jewelry, and it has the Valnaut on it. As I start opening it here, we notice, wow, it has animals on it, the actual knot work animals that you'd see in the Viking Age. And I see a little parchment uh, with a wax seal, and it looks like it has the Vegvisor on it, or the compass, a later century Icelandic compass. Let's go ahead and open this up. Beautiful little scroll. Let's see what it says real quick. It is with great pleasure and honor that we offer you this jewelry. We sincerely hope it meets your expectations. If this is not already the case, we are very interested in your opinion. Please leave us a review on our Facebook page, VKNG Jewelry, or directly on our product page. We will be extremely grateful for, uh, for this, and may the gods be with you. Alice and the VKNG team. Very beautiful little elegant uh, parchment note. They went to that much detail. It's wrapped up in some nice tissue paper here. I already see a uh, little sticker if you want to put that on something. And ooh, it is a bronze Thor's hammer. This is beautiful. If you look closely here, it has your animal knot work. Sorry, the wind is, Odin's about, uh, the wind's blowing it around. It has uh, your Celtic style knot work that goes into animal knot work, which is very Viking. And it looks like we have two Ulfar wolves. It looks like the Twer Ulfar of uh, Odin, uh, Geri and Freki. So that's excellent. I love it. The backside looks like it's just not work. This is definitely going to be my new favorite Thor's hammer. And sent as a gift of appreciation for the shield videos, unexpectedly. Did not expect that. It's got a little tag on it. You could probably use that if you were giving it as a gift to write something on it. I'm going to definitely put this on, but as a gift to the viewers. And uh, what they've said is they're going to reactivate the codes. 30 Thrand with the links down below will give you 30% off all hammers, pendants, and bracelets for 24 hours after you view this video. And then after that, I mean, for up to 15 days, they're going to give you 20% off the entire store with 20 Thrand and you use the link down below. So I think that is a great thing. Not only did they send me a beautiful gift here that I'm gonna put on, uh, but they also are gifting our viewers. So I can't thank them more than enough. And thank you, Alice. I'm glad you appreciate the videos I do and the historical videos. And today we're going to address two things that I always get asked. And I said, I, I, I thought about it when I knew I was getting sent a Mjolnir pendant, to be honest with you, which bronze I think is very fitting is did Thor use a hammer or an ax, or was it an ax hammer? And some legends, some people believe even a club or cudgel early on in the beliefs. We're gonna address that quickly, and we're also gonna address, did Vikings have war hammers? And if they did, did they use them in battle? You know, they were actually war hammers. Or did they have something like a war hammer? So to make this a very Thor episode for uh, Thor's Day or uh, Thor's Dagger, uh, we're going to test that. We're gonna answer whether they had war hammers, and we're gonna test what they did have that was like a war hammer. So stay tuned and uh, this is gonna be fun. And what I have here is a small hammer. This is like a modern 
a hammer that would be used to hammer out metal, a little three pound sledge on a very short handle. And historically, during the Viking Age, when you hear like Snorri Sturlofsson's uh, mythos on it, you hear about how the hammer was forged by dwarves and that the handle is very short and it has a really big heavy head and it would have had a longer handle but Loki turned into a horsefly and stung the dwarf's hand. When this took place it got shortened the handle because he stopped the bellows for a little bit. So that means the whole hammer would have been a pure metal hammer which due to the myth of it getting red hot when it's being thrown because I knew where lightning hit that it set fires and could melt things that it made sense. Forged out of really good metal Solid metal, heats up, travels very, very fast, always returns to his hand. He had special gauntlets to catch it. But was that always the myth since the beginning of time? Was Thor always Thor? Wasn't he Donar, Thornar, all the early migrational age names and Germanic names? Uh, all the way back to the early Stone Age or Neolithic Age, you hear about the axe god. A lot of times he's associated with the celestials, you know, the sky, the sun, rain, weather, lightning. So you see the axe god, and he had an axe. We see drawings of him in the old Scandinavian uh, cave drawings. We see drawings of men with axes that or look like god figures. So more than likely, he was the axe god. During the Scandinavian uh, Neolithic era, you see the men wearing uh, little pendants that look like axe heads. They're made out of different materials, sometimes stone, sometimes horn and different things, but we see little axe pendants. And these axe pendants uh, were just axes, kind of like this if they were turned on their side. So at that time period, the axe was the most important thing because to work with wood or to cut leather or do anything you needed or to cut up meat, you needed an edge on a piece of stone. And flint stone was used very commonly to make axes, uh, different types of stones that were like flint that you could actually start fires with as, as well. So you can see how that would be associated with lightning that started fires, because they thought the, god, the gods gave them the ability to make fire, and especially in a cold country, this makes total sense. But as you go into the Bronze Age, the early copper and bronze age, uh, and from the Stone Age, the actual Neolithic Age, most people don't like to call it the Stone Age, you see boat axes. And these boat axes, at the time period, uh, would be shaped a lot like a boat. One side would be an axe, because that was a tool, and the other side would be a hammer. These were also known as battle axes and were used in combat. They were really fat, thick, and quite heavy, and would have been used by the ancestors of the Scandinavian Vikings. Now, they honestly thought the gods were ancestral and uh, they came from the gods. So if you look at it in that manner, then yeah, it would make total sense that Thor, or Thor, Donar, the Thunderer, Donar, would carry something more like their ancestors would have carried, that they could have seen in graves as they passed down the legends. So you see the boat axes were made out of stone, copper, and even into the Bronze Age. But in the Bronze Age, we start seeing different axe shapes. And you see the Divine Twins. The Divine Twins are on the solar ship. That's combined with like the solar cross symbol later on, and you start seeing it turn into a, a, like a solar symbol with a cross in the center, also represented Odin. But you see the two figures, the Divine Twins, carried an axe in each hand. And they stood side by side, kind of like a yin and yang style symbol. And they carried two blades uh, and horns on them normally. So they represented duality, because one had in the right hand, one had in the left hand. And more than likely, one evolved into Thor, or Thor as we know him in the Viking Age, and uh, or even before that, and Tyr, uh, or Tyrwa. Uh, you will see those two images, and more than likely that's what they evolved to. Even in the uh, Mycenaean Age, in the Bronze Age, and the uh, Minoan Age, you see double-bitted axes, these big double-bitted axes to represent the gods. And in the Bronze Age, we see huge ceremonial bronze axe heads, kind of like Perun, that you see later on by the Slavs. And uh, there were axe heads, but it'd be like if you turn this sideways, that would be your axe head, not the two ends like people would imagine. But if we do hold it up and look at it, these two ends can also represent the short handle, later century, like they saw it. And these two ends here would be the actual hitting surface. So it changes it around if you think about it as the boat axe. But technically that boat axe looks a lot like Marvel's idea of Stormbringer. Like you see Beta Ray Bill and Thor using the comics, not to bring up some fantasy thing and not something historical to honor Thor, but those are modern beliefs. And uh, you see the same kind of design as the uh, boat hammer design that I showed. 
So as we continue into the Viking Age, uh, Viking Age people believed that you know, he had a hammer, and that made sense because of the thunder and lightning and it being solid metal and heating up later century. I can see that becoming part of the myth. But there was also lots of others where some of the Danes believed he still had a cudgel. Some people believed that it was made out of stone by the dwarves. Uh, matter of fact, later century, we, they find uh, actual stone or Neolithic axe heads made of flint-like material that you can start fires with and stuff and believe that they're thunderstones that lightning hit there and that's something that the gods had given them or actually the arrowheads were given to them by the gods to start fires with and people kept them as good luck to keep lightning from hitting them also lightning can actually hit in proper uh, conditions in sand and create obsidian that axes can be made out of so combining all that together it completely supports the fact of the thunder god or the lightning god having an axe or a hammer. So in my belief, Thor could have had an axe or a hammer uh, depending on the time period you're in. And a matter of fact, uh, the Vikings did not have war hammers as we know it. They would have had axe hammers. What would have been used in battle, that would have been the common tool, because Thor was the god of the common man, or the warrior and the craftsman, the free man, uh, the Carl, in the Viking Age. Not the thrall or the king, which would be Odin with the uh, Gungnir, the spear, and the wisdom. Thor had the brawn, the strength, the courage, and he could create things. So Thor with Mjolnir actually could hallow things, heal things, rebuild things with that hammer. Plus he could destroy things just as easily like the giants, the Terser. So the axe that the Vikings carried in the age had an axe on one side and a hammer on the other, so that gave the ability to cut wood, to build ships, to build houses, and the hammer worked to do that as well. It was also a good tool in battle because you had a hammer on one side if you didn't want to get stuck in something and just maybe damage somebody through mail like I'm wearing, uh, or you could use the axe head to hook with or what needed to be done with that to cut with. So the axe hammer, which were common in the Viking Age, probably the axe with a hammer on the backside probably was a better representation of what some people thought because back during the day people thought contemporary of what a god would have or what an ancestor would have and the gods were very much ancestral in origin. We even see that in later century artwork. We'll see stuff where they have contemporary arms and armor and garb on let's say biblical figures during the Middle Ages. So they would have thought that Thor probably would have had an axe hammer in their mind, sort of if it was a real weapon. And that's what they fought with. They fought with axes and there were hammers on the backside. So what we're doing today is uh, to answer that question about Viking war hammers. No, they big, didn't have big two-handed hammers. They had maybe big Dane axes later century that were two-handed axes. Some of them could have had hammers on the backside. We're gonna be testing the hammers on the back of axes in honor of Thor. And I'm sure he wants me to uh, Shut up now, stop talking about his history, and crush some heads. We have our analog ballistics gel head right here. And if you look at it, you could see it looks a lot like the ones they use on different history programs and so on, but this is our own design. I use the 20% ballistics gelatin. I have a reinforced PVC spine. There is a fake blood concoction inside the spine and inside the skull, which is made out of a coconut. Uh, this is cured. Uh, they're affordable. I can make these. They give a good accurate test from what I can tell. I have tested on the wild hog recently or the boar and uh, I would say yeah these perform extremely realistic. Uh, it's good medium and if you want to think it's weaker then uh, you can think that but I don't think so. But if you're testing a helmet I guarantee you that if you if it protects this head it'll protect yours for sure. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, look at the helm we're going to be using today and talk a little bit about Viking Age helmets. The only Viking Age helm that we found in Scandinavia, we found other helms throughout different regions of the world in, in areas where Vikings went, but actually that we can identify as a Scandinavian helmet is a Germunbu helm from Norway. Uh, a good friend of mine, Vithgard Viki, uh, on Twitter gives me lots of information. He even provided me with the Twisco article about the uh, symbol from the Bronze Age uh, and how it relates to Thor's hammer. So if you want to look at that article, that's going to be down below and uh, I might help you. Plus I knew some of the information I talked about, uh, about Thor and the history of Thor and Donar or Thor. Uh, but I thought that, that he provided some very good information and he's the conservator of that helm, the Germumbo helm. Some parts of it are three millimeters thick. So as a disclaimer, uh, the helm we're gonna be using today is 16 gauge. 
and uh, the Gurmubo helm is three millimeters thick on the ocular and the bands, but the actual plates, like this part here, if you look at the helm I'm wearing, it's constructed with rivets, riveted bands. It's a Spangen style helm with a nasal, the one I've got here. The Gurmubo, of course, everybody knows has got the famous ocular that's thicker, but this helm that I'm wearing is 12 gauge. It was not impossible to make a helm all 12 gauge out of iron, bog iron or wrought iron, bloomery iron, in that time period. If you look at the helm I'm wearing, it's all 12 gauge. That one would have been 1.5 millimeter on the plates. The plates that make up the Spangen helm that would have been riveted in between were actually thinner than the bands and the ocular, which in this case we have a nasal. But this helm I'm using is gonna be all 16 gauge. It's made very much like a later century, century Norman helm, and it's more of a transitional helm. It's like something the Normans would have had that had a visor. This one actually moves, but it doesn't have to be. It could have been riveted on. It's got some cheek plates and a back plate. And honestly, we see some artwork from the Viking Age that does show that it might have had, some helms might have had something on the cheeks possibly or on the back. Now, we don't know if they had leather hanging there or metal. I mean, it could have been metal with a nasal. We do see a, a wood carving that looks very much like that. I believe it's a cigarette. I don't know the exact time period it's made, but if it was towards the later Viking age, then that tells us that it was plausible to have other things. Or during the migrational age, you see mail hanging, like aventails hanging from helmets. But today we got our strapping inside. This helm here that we're using is damaged. If you look at it closely, you can see it has a hole through the side. This happened from the bog axe reproduction by Adrian Watson. And it performed very well, just like I said, an ax that's designed to pierce from a smaller head and with extra heft behind it on a long handle, yeah, it could do that to a helmet. So the stories of them splitting helmets and sagas and people's head get injured on the inside, I think that's what they meant, like from an ax or so on, or maybe the rivets failed. We don't know. We don't know how thick they were because they could have been anywhere from 15 gauge, 16 gauge up to... Uh, up to 12 gauge, you know, possibly on the helms. So we're not sure, or even slightly thicker. So I'm gonna put this helm on, and we will strap it on him properly, and get it lined up properly. And this will give us an idea of what kind of damage these hammers could do through a helmet into the head. One of the things I love about axes, especially one-handed axes used with shields, they can easily be carried on a ring on your belt. Works really well. Matter of fact, this ax here is from Medieval Shop, so is the ring that I'm wearing. Uh, but this is a Viking-style Francesca in my mind. It has a hammer on the back. A lot of Francescas didn't have that. And they had slightly different shaped handles, but this is a definite Fra Francesca shape. We've used it against the shield here in the video, if you want to check that out, where I threw it at it. It didn't want the, the worst cuts into it due to the smaller profile head. Like my belief is this type of ax was used against armor. It's more of a ergonomic or streamlined cut where you get a smaller portion of the ax hitting to cut into mail, possibly cut some rings out, break bones easy, easier and so on. But we have the longest hammer head on the back of this ax. That means it's the largest space, so it doesn't, it doesn't get as small as some of the other hammers we're gonna be testing today. And the handle's a little bit shorter. I'm gonna be using the shield, because it's fitting with the actual ring that I'm wearing, and the shield's got the emblem on it. Uh, this shield's a little bit small for the Viking Age or even the Migrational Age. They did have smaller shields, but normally Viking Age shields were usually much larger than this. I also gets in the way less for this video so you can see what I'm doing properly. So let's go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and hit here. I've hammered out the cut that was in it from the reproduction of the bog axe, so we don't have anything sharp going into the head, and the strapping is there. We don't know how the helms were strapped historically. Very well could have been strapped like I have strapping in it. Uh, they very well could have been padded. It has some kind of padding in them, like some kind of a wool felt wool in them or something. We don't know what they put in the actual helm. I would say strapping could have been pretty common due to rivet holes that we find in the helms, just like their Gurmunbu helm has holes in it. Some people think for an aventail, some people think that it also accommodated the strapping. So either way, very plausible. I'm gonna start off by hitting here. Hopefully everybody can see me properly. And I have my GoPro on too, so you'll be able to see that first head-on view of it hitting. And I'm gonna to try to hit in a fresh area, and I'm gonna to try to channel a strength of Thor. Thor, y'all! Hit as hard as I can and see if I can kill this man through the helmet. And fear not, if I can't kill him through the helmet, what's gonna happen is I'm gonna try it without the helmet at the end. So we'll see what happens. Plus, we got a few axes to go through. Wow, that was one heck of a dent. 
It's shaped like the hammer. I hit it a little bit higher than I expected, but if you see, we've got a shape in it that looks just like the hammer. I don't know what kind of damage that did, but the only way I can find out is to pull the helmet off real quick. Take a look. We're going to check each time because it's probably a good idea and just see what happened. Ooh, I would say that impacted his head some. We actually knocked the helm down into his head some. So if it just had strapping in it and there was no extra padding or anything worn on his head, uh, I don't think he would have a cracked skull, but he would have had a busted head through the helmet. Concussion. Uh, maybe a concussion, maybe. That was a hard blow. I, could, I saw that. I mean, that was extreme. Let's go ahead and try again here. One of the other things I like about axes, you could have a sword in your hand, you could have a spear, a spiot, a spart, and you could have your ux right here behind the shield hidden. Because a lot of times the handle was shorter than the longer shields, so it could easily hide in and it could be an extra weapon or be thrown or whatever you like, but you can hold it right here with your shield. I like that idea, and I like bearded axes. This is a bearded axe. This is the war hatchet from Medieval Shop. Uh, I've tested it many times. Uh, it cuts extremely well, and it's got a nice broad beard on it. Uh, that can also be used to hook shields, hook opponents' legs, and pull them down. I've done lots of videos about stuff like that where we've actually used it as a tool in combat to hook shields, hook legs, works excellently, hook weapons and disarm people. Uh, but today we're going to be using the hammer, and this hammer is slightly smaller than the other hammer. Uh, I think this one has a little more weight to it, but I could be wrong. They're about the same, about the same handle length, but the, ax the actual hammers are smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a good shot, and I'm going to hit probably a different area, hopefully, if I can. And we're going to hit it right about here, and I'll try and see what happens. All the power I can give it. Oh, I hit high. I hit way high, and I creased into the actual seam. I meant to hit lower. But that actually, if you look at the way the thing was shaped, that is totally deformed the front of the helmet. Now, do I think it did any severe damage to him? No, and that's not what I was aiming at. So I'm thinking, should I just go ahead and hit it one more time with this one? Wow, I don't know what that one did, but I say we check it out. That put a nice shape of the front of the hammer in it. And I'm noticing that the hammer shape, like me thinking it hitting square due to the shape of the, the helmer, it doesn't. You hit with partially parts of the hammer, just like you normally hit with the tip of the blade from an ax. So if the tip of the tip shaped right, it's easier to cut in and the back. So we might want to test that in the future. Let's go ahead and pull this uh, helmer off and check it out. But yeah, well, that's a nasty dent. Both of them are. I wouldn't doubt the skull could be damaged in some way. Can't guarantee, but we can always look. Ooh. Am I seeing blood? We have a crack. Yeah. I don't know. I should maybe should have took it off sooner, but the top one on the crease, I didn't think would really have done it if you look at it pro properly. That's where I hit here. That was the earlier hit, and this was the newest hit here, if you can see it in the lighting. It looks like the shape of the hammer. Cracks right here. Yeah, there's a crack in the skull. It's most likely from the second hit due to the angle of which it was in. Yeah. It also comes down into this point here. If you pay attention behind the gel. Yeah. You've got the crack that you can see. It's only got a seep. These are not extreme, so uh, it's a it's a concussion and a cracked skull. And this is actually quite damaged over here from the jagged edge because it compressed it down so far when I hit overhead. So actually, if this wasn't here, you wouldn't be counting this type of carnage. This is already a, um, an ax that had pierced the skull. So that's why we're not counting this side. We're only counting this side. Some of you all out there right now might recognize this ax if you all watch Vikings. Uh, and on Vikings, Ragnar, one of the major characters, and I think there's a couple other axes that look something like this on the program, uh, uses this ax. This is a replica of Ragnar's ax. It's of the utmost quality. And what I mean by this, it is specifically hardened 
at a modern steel, so it has a razor sharp edge, but that's not what we're testing today. This is from Dan Pecknick from Norick Steel on Facebook. If you're all interested in his work, it's beautiful. He does uh, historical axes as well. Uh, this one could be a historical axe. The shape of the axe head is not totally unheard of or unseen within the Viking age or, or ages or throughout the ages. And uh, he also has a Blue Fire Forge on Etsy, I believe. But he makes an excellent axe. This is one of my favorite axes of all time, but it's a broad bladed axe. And I've been getting a little bit more fond of the uh, a lower profile heads, especially against armor. But this one would work great in any circumstance. But against armor, you'd probably flip it over and use this hammerhead anyway. Uh, why dull your edge when the edge could be work, work really well in a uh, unarmored fight or a lightly armored fight against leather and cloth and so on. Uh, you might as well just flip it over. So uh, unless you were hooking with it, we'll use the hammer. This is one of our smaller hammer heads and probably our hardest hammer head. And what I mean by that is it's a specifically hardened head, which normally maybe the back wouldn't be hardened as much on the Viking Age. So that is a little disclaimer there. This also has a really long handle and a really good grip on it, which I don't think on Viking Age axes it was that common to have something wrapped on there, but you never know. Very plausible if somebody liked using it that exact length and it would work very well. So let's go ahead and uh, try this one out. And I'm gonna try to hit in a new area somewhere in here. And I will try going full force with this longer handle, get the most out of it. Oh! Wow! You've got to see this one. I hit further over than I expected. I meant to hit here, but uh, yeah, it almost tore through the metal with just a square point. But remember, like I said, if this, it almost tore through the metal just with this square head, but if this was bog iron, it probably would deform a way, way more. And we'll show that on the historical ax that the back had been used as a hammer and deformed quite a bit. This one didn't deform hardly at all. It took a little damage on the very corner point, but not much. But look at what it did to our metal. It almost tore through the metal as if it was sharp with the corner point that hit. So I'm expecting some severe damage on this head. I'm sorry, and it's quite hot today, so it's not good for ballistics gel. I'm sorry to say that, but yeah, we definitely have more damage to the skull. Nothing like I expected where the head exploded or anything, but we definitely have more damage to the skull. And there are, is blood coming out of the cracks that are in it. I can't tell to what degree, but looks like some inside here we can't see very well. Very devastating. I think this one performed the best out of the axes we've tested so far. Longer handle more hardened hammer. Some of you may recognize this bog axe. I used it recently. Uh, it's not as sharp as it could be. If it was as sharp as this axe here, it would have embedded itself in the uh, bore that we tested recently and just released. That was a Patreon special. So if anybody out there is upset because it didn't get a bunch of hits, we didn't want to damage the artifact. This has been mounted, which probably shouldn't have been done, uh, but it belongs to Ulf R. Rolfinson, and he wanted to uh, actually have it as an axe, like an ancestral axe, because back in the day they would take uh, axes from graves and use them because they thought they had power. So he sees it in that manner. I see it as an artifact. I'm not going to grind it or sharpen it. The patina got hurt a little bit, I would say, but out of all the testing we've done with it, nothing major has happened to it. That's why we made this one. Uh, Adrian Watson forged it. Uh, it's turned up a hair at the point a little bit more than the other one. Uh, but other than that, it's an exact replica. It's made out of iron and steel, forged welded together, and it has a small hammer on the back. This is one of the smallest hammers you will see on the back. But I tested it when I was hammering the helmet out slightly for this, and yes, it deformed slightly, hitting a piece of metal to help bend the inside of the helmet out. So it is soft on the back. The edge is the only super hard thing about it, like the replica. And if we look at this one closely, you will see at the back that uh, it's deformed. I mean, from using it as a tool. And it's a historical one. It is obvious that that's exactly what took place. So anyway, what we're gonna do is use the replica. And it is not hardened. It's not like the other ax I tested, which is nothing wrong with modern hardened axes. Anybody who wants to say that, I mean, that's just totally, it's just, it's not as a historical as it could be on the testing as if we use something like this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and use this hammer. And this is probably the most historical hammer on the longest half with the smallest head and see what kind of damage we can get from this. 
This is also the axe, so everyone knows, that pierced this helmet. And we do have quite a bit of gore and damage on this other side because it damaged the strapping slightly, not too badly, still able to hold it up above the head, but it pierced in so deep and cut into the metal that there's a jagged edge on that side sticking into the head. We'll see what that did. I definitely caved it in way more. I am accidentally Robin Hooding here like I always do and hitting the same spot. Hitting the helmet did not deform it much. So that means the helmet bends enough that it's not enough to actually be a resistance as that other tool, axe was used as a tool and this one was used as a tool today to bend it some. So let's go ahead and we'll look at it. I have a feeling that that maybe did our head in, I don't know. I'm only taking one hit at a time and the reason we're doing that is we don't want to take all day doing this, but it's to give it the benefit of the doubt. Could you take one hit through the Yalmer and survive? Yes, this skull's cracked. This guy was knocked out. He's not fighting anymore. He may die. Uh, but as for, uh, as for, uh, and of course he's got injuries over here from the jagged piece that came down, especially from that top Hopefully hit. Hopefully he would have repeated his helmet. Yeah, we've got blood leaking out. Daddy realized that if you look right here, we have a crack through the skull. And this started somewhere in this region. Uh, that was that overhead hit. The earlier ax, when we hit it on the crease, which is something I didn't expect it to do that much damage, but that's why you made a Spangen style helm or brought it up tall is to cause that high ridge so it couldn't cave into the head. But what we have here, it's already slightly dented in and I think that the impact caused this part of the helmet to impact the skull, that's what we see right here, and that was enough to crack it. So we actually have a crack through the skull in this area and if you see all this chewed up area, that's because I didn't hammer this out. I didn't really think about that causing that kind of problem, but this had pierced before as it set on the head with the strapping that it had and pierced into the skull, the actual ax did. So all those impacts were causing this to move like this and cut into the head. So that probably wouldn't be doing that on, on our uh, uh, Viking today, our Vikinger, our Berserker or whatever we're attacking. This wouldn't be happening, this is not Disregard that. Actually, it may happen. Well, if it already had a wound, uh, uh, if uh, the battle cut would be into going the, on for a period. Right, but this is the actual crack here. If you see it, it's into the skull, and that came from this piece, which has already been in some. So if it wasn't been in, we don't know for sure what would happen. But that overhead hit did not glance. It actually tore the metal on the scene, knocking it straight down, and it caused this to crack the skull. But we also realized that if you look inside. Uh, the strapping actually tore through and that was from the other hits before it was tearing already and damaged. It's just thin leather, so it, it pretty much, that's what caused our damage. If the strapping had held and it didn't have the dent, that might not have happened, but still that is a devastating killing blow. Although this might not have seemed like a contest, uh, the war hatchet with the big hammerhead on the back, uh, nice and defined, actually is the one who got the killing blow because I hit on the top. Now, I know that the strapping was kind of damaged and failed, which we didn't realize that at the time. I didn't really pay that much attention to it. I assumed just the old cut into the helmet was damaging the ballistics gel and that was it. I didn't notice. Caddy's the one who noticed the blood was coming out of that side and that it actually shattered through the skull. Well, that downward hit straight overhead is what did the, what I consider definitive killing blow through the helmet and was impressive. This is our heavier one on the shorter handle and to honor Thor, uh, Mjolnir by one legend is on a short handle and a heavy head. We're gonna go ahead and finish with this one. Just like I said, might as well finish the gel head off uh, once and for all after it's damaged that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the back and see what just the hammer would do to the skull without a helmet, which we pretty much already know, but let's see. Oh! Wow, yep, I'm pretty sure that is a kill. We've got the skull totally opened up. Same with a high hit like it did before. That weight makes it want to pull forward, but that is through the skull. Blood's now pouring out. Yeah. Maybe well, I should take one hit on the jaw real quick. Just go for it. The problem is, 
uh, most of our cameras are set up for that angle. I'm gonna come this way. I'll try coming in this way. Ah! Ooh, that was grody. Let's see what we got here. It spun the whole head. I would say we got some damage to that jaw. It looks like it mostly ripped the jaw out. It didn't actually shatter the jaw like I was expecting. Let's go ahead and hit it one more time. Now that's what I expected from our jaw. Shattered our jaw and uh, it's quite hot today. I'm gonna to be honest, we have a heat wave going on. So at this point in our test, our gel is deteriorating slightly. So it ripped our entire jaw completely out of the head. We still have some of the jaw still left here. You can see the shattered part, which is impressive. And I think our blunt, our bludgeoning weapon uh, worked well as the ax head trying to attack a helmet. We didn't damage our edge on any of the axes. So that's an advantage. Uh, no damage to the edges on the axes. No glances like we normally get. Almost everything on that helmet or the helmer uh, was a solid hit to the degree that it killed through the helmet. And then just one hit to the head and then this is just, it was already cracked, but that's just devastating. If you look at this, I have a feeling it has already slightly opened this way. It was most likely cracked where the uh, joint, the cracks that were already in the head. Right, the, the weakest, uh, just like lightning, cracks follow the path of least resistance where they already are cracked or they're weaker. So we got from this hit here, it went in and knocked this piece up. The jaw hit totally shattered this, which we were already tearing through the flesh and knocked it out. So yeah, first jaw hit just kind of loosened the whole thing and bent it. The other one just totally shattered our really tough jaw. I think all in all, we honored Thor and the hammer on the back of an ax is an effective weapon, which I mean, I assumed it would be, but it doesn't glance, doesn't dull your edge. So you still have an edge for things that you can cut. Uh, and it seems to work very effectively. It doesn't have that little bit of extra reach over the shield, but I think it would still be an effective weapon, especially fighting against armor and help preserve your weapon and glance a lot less. Plus it's highly devastating against an unarmored opponent if you had to hit them with it. So in any event, I think we did a good video today. I hope that VKNG enjoyed it. Uh, I'll have links down below for information that you see in the video. So always go down there and check through there uh, and be sure and give them a, a view. Go buy their catalog, look through their hammers, their pendants, uh, their bracelets uh, for 30% off, 30 thrand and 20% uh, off. You can go there and get 20% off up to 15 days after this video on everything, 20 thrand. Anyway, as always, I hope you enjoyed the episode and thank everybody who helped me uh, make it possible. Barbell. If you'd like to help support the channel, you can always support a Thane Thrand YouTube channel shirt that you can get over at viralstyle.com at the Thane Thrand merchandise store. We have coffee mugs, koozies, a wide variety of shirts and hats. You can also help support us on Patreon, and if you do that, you'll also get exclusive content that can only be seen there.